All right, folks, God bless you, and welcome to This Is It, Before the Fire. Guys, um, I had probably the most supernatural thing happen to me today that's ever happened, uh, and that says a lot. Um, the king is coming. <laughs> the king is coming. I guarantee it. The king is coming. He's coming right away. Um, I guess the best thing I can do is just to give you guys a witness. i show you guys uh, the circumstances. I documented the events and when it, the bizarre thing that happened and, and that the way the Lord rolled it out. First of all, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just, the king's coming. The king is coming. I'll say it again. The king is coming. Again, no one knows the hour of the day. I'm going to share with you what happened to me today. Um, the video I did the other day, I told you in that video that the Lord keeps telling me, Jonathan, it's time to let go. It's time to let go, Jonathan. Let go of everything. Let go of your children. Let go of anything, anyone you think you need to take care of. Uh, let go of the world. Let go of any cares. And I was overwhelmed with the message. So the other day, I tried to do a video where I showed you guys, look, guys, when the Lord communicates something to me, it's usually a series of steps. I first, I hear him tell me something, and then he, he proves it. He gives me confirmation after confirmation. And then he'll do a confirmation that's so overwhelming, I cannot ignore or I cannot not act on it. Like Chinati, I told you, he conveyed to, he wanted me to go to Chinati to the desert and take all my skydiving gear. It was the most bizarre thing. I was like, I was having trouble believing that that's really what the Lord was telling me to do. And then he proved it. When he walked me into that art gallery after I, while I was literally praying in the car and he walked me into the art gallery he told me go in that building right there the one with the wind blades which is what uh an lz has a landing zone and i walk in and the entire gallery is landscapes of west texas where chinati is big ben that's impossible and then the number one the main painting in the whole gallery the first painting i walk in and look at the Lord tells me, Jonathan, go look at that painting. It's a shepherd leading sheep through Big Bend. That's impossible. To be praying and actively in prayer when the when you turn a corner and the Lord says, go in that building while you're praying, should you go to Big Bend? And the next thing you know, you're standing in an art gallery and all the paintings are of Big Bend. That's not possible. But that's what happened. And then the painting was a shepherd leading sheep through the desert in Big Bend. <laughs> I mean, come on, folks. That's insane. I was like, okay. And then I hear the Lord say, look at the name of the the artist. It was Melvin Warren. I asked the gallery owner, is it okay to photograph this stuff? He gave me permission, and I did. The name of the artist was Melvin Warren. Melvin in the Lord told me, look up the meaning of Melvin. Look up the meaning of the name Warren. Melvin means chief and Warren means watchman. When I saw that, there was no way not to go to Chinati. <laughs> I was like, are you nuts? You'd be crazy not to go. Okay, listen to me, folks. Listen to me. I had that to an exponential number today with the Lord telling me I'm coming. The time to leave here is at hand. I am, I'm just like, I'm going to share with you how he did it. I'm here to tell you, if you're the bride of Christ and you've been waiting and you know he's coming, you have the key of David, you know the truth, you know the world's been, in, you've been, you've been led away captive into a world where you were inverted. If you know all this, 
Revelation 3, the letter to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. If you understand that scripture and it speaks to you, whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. If you know you are the new Jerusalem, you are the new city of peace, you know that you've been converted, you know your eyes have become single, you know the truth, you know that you're on the rock. Upon this rock I will build my church. I've been ringing this bell for years. I'm looking you in the eye. The Lord conveyed to me so clearly over the last week that I cannot ignore it. Same as I could not ignore being walked into an art gallery where all the art was of West Texas when I was asking, should I, you want me to go to Chinati and take my skydiving gear? I did exactly what he said. I showed you the video. You cannot fake that. You cannot pick up a rock that's been split in half out of trillions of rocks. You can't do it. I'm going to give you a testimony now. Jesus is coming. <laughs> do you see my whole body convulse? I can't make that happen. Okay, y'all ready? We're about ready to leave here and I I want to I'm going to give you guys a couple little video clips that the Lord showed me the other day before even before the last video I did he kept showing me weird little thing after thing to show me I'm coming Jonathan you're about to leave you need to let go of the world Jonathan tell everyone to let go of the world and the message was let go let go the last video I did I told you that Okay, so y'all ready? Take a sip of my coffee. Let's do it. Oh boy. I am. There's no words for what is happening to me right now. Jesus has conveyed to me he's coming. My entire ministry, the, all the revelation, the U.S. currency, all the bombings printed on the money, the Vatican's a snake. These are all revelations the Lord God gave to me to give to you. Now he has told me, Jonathan, I'm at the door. I'm, okay, y'all ready? So let me start, ready? Okay, I'm going to use this this little video clip. I, I'm not going to give you the whole testimony behind it because it'd take an extra 15 minutes. At 5 in the morning, 5 a.m. the other morning, I got up and I was praying, saying, Lord, I know you're coming. Uh, I just, I, I, can't, I feel it. I know you're coming. And the Lord, you know, the Lord conveyed to me over and over again, yes, I'm coming. Later that day, I was walking in the door and a friend of mine, Chase, had sent me a letter in the mail and I was walking in the house with a DVD. A DVD had fallen out of my out of my stuff and it bounced and it land the DVD case landed like this, like making a, a pyramid like on the ground. And I went, Oh, that's weird. Do you want me I looked up at the sky and I said, Do you want me to watch this DVD? And by a bizarre set of circumstances, I, I got a text right then from Chase. And he said, hey, uh, you know, I, I called him up and he said, hey, did you watch the video I sent you? And I said, you mean the DVD you sent me? He said, no, the video I sent you. And I said, oh, you didn't? He said, 29 minutes in heaven. And I said, oh, I thought it said 23 minutes in hell because the DVD said 23 minutes in hell. And I went, and he said, 29 minutes in heaven. I'm like, that's weird. Heaven, hell, 23, 20. <laughs> it's like, that's kind of weird. He goes, no. So anyway, long story short, this video I'm going to show you plays into part of the message. So let me just show you this little clip. So by a bizarre set of circumstances, again, I was up praying at five in the morning. I know you're coming, Lord. You keep conveying to me that you're coming, that we're about to leave. I know you're coming. I know we're about to leave. And then this video just comes across 
my desk, so to speak, in my hemisphere. Let me show you this. Just watch and listen. Earth. And it like was choking the earth. And they were fighting. And they were doing this like big football pile up over time. There was a sun flare. And all of a sudden I realized that is the good on this earth that's happening. I knew right then and there that there was good on the earth. That was God. And the demons were at war. It was like, it was a like war against good and evil. And I was like, oh my goodness. This is a fight against good? and evil or evil and good whatever way you want to see it like there was no in between mm. and the thing was that some of these demons had like very like um, strong bodies some looked like they were starved their whole life and I don't know why some would be so healthy looking but yet so disgusting yet some had like no foreheads some had very large foreheads like they looked different did you see any angels in the midst going forth. I did not see a single angel. At that time. Other than the one next that, to me. Right. At that time, you just seen that demonic army. Yeah. Okay. Other than the huge light rays that were shooting from Earth, that could have been angels underneath the cover protecting the children of God from these demons. I don't know what was underneath that shield. Okay. So as I'm leaving Earth, the Earth is now this very small globe, and it gets... Okay. So pay attention now. Okay. Like I said, I'm just trying to get to this little part right here so the guy so this video comes across my desk so to speak but the lord's already told me jonathan it's it's time you know and so it's really weird i had some dvd 23 minutes in hell chase is saying did you watch my video i sent you i i got him confused and so now i was watching this this little segment but the lord had already been conveying to me it's time to go it's time to let go and so let me let me show you this part now. This is this is where I want you to listen. The guy says, as he was leaving Earth, he was going up. This is very important. This was four, five, six days ago. Today, what you're listening to right now, what you're listening to right now, today was communicated back to me in the weirdest way. I was like, oh my gosh. Just wait. Okay, watch. smaller and smaller and smaller until it's like a speck and then it just literally disappears and the way you want to see it in the midst going protecting the children of god from these demons it disappears and before i knew it an instant later i was in this wall of water in the midst going forth i did not see a single angel at that time other than the one next to me right at that time you just seen that demonic army yeah. Okay. Other than the huge light rays that were shooting from Earth, that could have been angels underneath the cover protecting the children of God from these demons. I don't know what was underneath that shield. So okay, I'm so I'm sorry. I had like a little trouble zeroing in on that spot. Here it is. He's talking about leaving. Now he's leaving. This is this guy had a you know a death experience, leaving his body. And and anyway, like I said, don't worry about it. It's going to play into everything. It's going to blow your mind. So as I'm leaving Earth, the Earth is now this very small globe. And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's like a speck. And then it just literally disappears. And before I knew it, an instant later, I was in this wall of water. And I, I don't know why there was this giant wall of water, but it stretched for many miles in every direction. Like it was a, it was a protection. And it was about six, seven feet thick maybe eight foot, eight foot thick from what I could just see from side to side, but I'm suspended in this wall of water. I'm, now I'm helpless. Before, up to this point, I could choose what I wanted to do. Now I'm in this wall of water and the angel's now in front of me and I can see him through the wall of water. He's a strong, very strong angel. White hair, um, had, a, had a bit of a weathered face, but it was shining so bright, like it was just glowing. And I'm in water and I'm seeing this figure. And he speaks to me and said, It's time for you to breathe everything that is it's time for you to breathe everything out that is of this earth in you. I'm like, I have to breathe out the air I'm holding in, trying to stay alive here. He said, You cannot go where we are going with the air you have in your lungs. And I literally felt like I had to surrender. 
and I'm sitting there fighting, struggling. I'm like, I blow up some bubbles, and the bubbles just like just go. They just like they just like disappear in mid water, and I'm like fighting, and I like pretend to blow out all my bubbles. I'm holding it, holding it, holding it. He said, No, I, I know you're holding it, and I'm like, Frick! And I like I just fought, and I fought, and I fought, and I fought, holding on to what was in the earth, the last bit of what I had from my from the earth in me. And then I just thought to myself, what am I doing fighting this? Like, I'm dead. I can't go back. I'm going to surrender. And so I just surrendered it. I was like, I, just, I let everything leave my body. And I just felt like something left me, the air that was in my lungs. And at that instant, I was transformed from facing this way to the opposite way. And we broke through the wall together. And below me was the throne room. Okay, I'm going to pause it there. So you, this is uh, in the links. You guys can go watch it, but here's the point. So the Lord had already conveyed to me, Jonathan, it's time to go. We're, you know, it's time to surrender, let go of everything. By the way, the shirt I'm wearing is part of this testimony. Every, You're not going to believe all the stuff that happened. So anyway, I, I watched that and I was like, wow, that is really bizarre. Just the, the way it got in front of me, uh, that particular part where he says he was, you know, the angel said you have to breathe out everything of this world and let it all get, let it all go surrender. And then once he did, he was turned the opposite direction. Did you hear what he said? Once he did, then he was turned the opposite direction and he could go in. Don't you find that curious? Since I'm the opposite direction guy, that you got to be turned the opposite direction to go in. That's what being on the rock is. Okay, so that caught my attention and I was like, that's very bizarre. Let me show you the next very bizarre thing that within a couple minutes was staring me in the face. I was like, don't forget, he was in a wall of water. He had to let go. Every, he said he had to let go of everything of the earth, right? Let me show you the next thing. This is very bizarre. Okay, so at 5 in the morning, at 5 in the morning, this is in front of me. I believe it was a little after 5 a.m. How to escape from inside of a whale or learning to trust, okay? Now, if you go on YouTube and you look, try and find this particular clip, you can find this same clip over and over again on YouTube, but it doesn't have writing on it. This was the one that was put in front of me immediately after going over that video clip, and then this was in front of me. Don't worry, we're getting, this is all over a week ago, everything you're seeing. I just have to give you this in order to get to the point where I was. it was communicated to me today, Jonathan, the time to leave is right in front of you. I'm at the door. So just sit tight, watch. Okay, it's a scene from some Finding Nemo. And let me just skip through some stuff so we don't waste any time. Let's just get to it. Good. You tell him I'm not interested in being alone. Okay. Stop talking to him. Okay. Doreen! Let go! He says it's time to 
Okay, I'm going to pause it there. Now, I understand that's just a finding email clip, but directly after watching a clip where they're in the guys in a wall of water and the angel tells them it's time to let go they're in a wall of water and then the tongue goes up and she says it's time to let go now the lord's got my attention i'm like okay this is getting a little weird i mean that's right then i hear in my spirit you ready this is what i hear and i'm going to give you a link you're i can't play it you can go watch it. I hear the Lord say in my spirit, Doc, look, look at Dr. Strange going through a portal. Okay. I'll admit that sounds really weird. I was like, that's weird. So I pulled up, I typed into YouTube because Finding Nemo was right in front of me. I typed in Dr. Strange going through a portal. Okay, so you can see the link to this now. If I cannot play this for you right now, but imagine you're me. You just watched the guy that he had when he was taken up to heaven. He couldn't enter unless he let go of everything in the world. The Lord had already been telling me it's time to let go. Now I'm watching some video of a guy saying he was taken to heaven. He saw the earth behind him disappear. He was in a wall of water. And the angel said, you have to let go of everything of the earth. Then I'm watching Finding Nemo uh, immediately after the testimony. And he's in a wall of water. And Dory is saying, you have to let go. He's saying, he's saying it's time to let go. And now I'm like, okay, this is weird. Then I hear the Lord say, look up Doctor Strange going through a portal. What? Doctor Strange, like in the Avenger movies? Yeah. And so I type it into Google and I pull it up and I just play this little scene. And right here, you'll see right here in this scene, he ends up coming through this portal on the mountain and his teacher says, you need to let go, surrender. Okay, that happened seven days ago, maybe five, seven days ago. And I was just like, this is so bizarre. I mentioned it in my video yesterday. Like, guys, there's all these weird things that have been happening. This is what I was talking about. The the testimony, uh, finding you all right on top of each other, one after another. Let go, let go, let go. Okay? That's pretty weird, right? And I thought, well, you know what? I don't need to make a YouTube video about that, but that's pretty crazy. So I know the Lord is conveying this message to me. Jonathan, it's time to let go. I mean, how could you not figure that out when the Lord shoved that in front of you immediately one after the other? Okay, that's my point. So anyway, all this other stuff is happening as well. The ring that was found by the back door uh, at the Ark, you know, in, in Houston. Uh, Y'all know about the Ark, you know, the place in Houston that the lady that who I laid hands on who had stage four cancer she was she was at the um walking in the back door and no one goes there and this ring was on the ground and it says Jesus on it three times and it has uh, three crosses and it was at her back door when she asked everyone is this your ring no it belonged to nobody very strange and then oddly enough when i ordered that my uh national geographic the lord told me i'm going to speak to you through this magazine and I thought, wow, that's very strange. And I, I told Kat on the phone, this is what I hear the Lord saying right now while I'm talking to you on the phone. He said, I'm going to speak to you through this magazine. And I opened up that magazine and it showed Juan Valdez. He looked, said, look at the name Juan and Valdez. It means John Courageous and Associates are at the back door and they're about, they're opening the door. They're, they're getting ready to open the door. And I thought, wow, that is just super weird. I just like, it's really bizarre, right? So anyway, so I'm trying not to make a big issue of any of that. Even though I know exactly what the Lord's telling me, like there's no way you can miss it. Jesus is at the back door, a ring. Then he tells me the magazine you ordered. And I just said, it looks like there's going to be a, you know, some kind of a get together. And I open the magazine and it's a get together. It's a big party. The The very page I opened up to, I just said the word, looks like there's going to be a big party here. And I open it up and it's a party and everybody's looking up. I'm like, that is so weird. 
that the Lord keeps conveying the same message, don't you think? I thought it was very strange. So, but I'm waiting for that Chinati art gallery moment. Okay, I'm I when the Lord's going to convey a message, He's not going to have you think, oh well, you know, I saw these three videos, so the Lord's coming for sure. No, 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 no. He's going to have to. He's going to have to convince me that I'm coming. Uh, uh, he had to convince me to go to Chinati. He had to convince me to go to Kill Devil Hills. I, even though he had conveyed go to kill devil hills to me, if y'all know the the testimony, I said, Lord, if there's some way you could show me the devil getting killed, it'd make it a whole lot easier for me to get there. And within two days, little Nas came out with the video where he slides down the the stripper pole into hell and kills the devil. That's what got me to go to kill devil hills because I asked. I said, if you could, man, if there's some way. You could show me the devil getting killed. That would really help. And within a day, maybe a day, within a day or two, uh, Kay sent me, a, who, who I don't talk to all the time. It's kind of rare that I talk to Kay. Kay sent me a video of Little Naz. He said, you got to check out this this video called Montero and um, call me by my name. And he slid down a strip pole into the pit and killed the devil. And I'm like, wow, I got to go to Kill Devil Hills. That's why I went. Do you want to know how I know for sure the Lord's coming? Okay, because all the stuff I have show, showed you in that last video, he can, he has a way of conveying a message. Let me show you what he did today. Um, you see the shirt that I'm wearing right now? Right now, okay. The Lord has had me literally securing some stuff that He told me you need to kind of get get ready, prepare your heart, prepare yourself. Because apparently I look like I'm some kind of a target for the enemy, obviously, because of what I've done and who I've ratted out and the information that I brought forth. I've seen the Vatican, one of my DVDs that shows the Vatican is a damn snake. Do you think the Pope's excited about me sending the Vatican DVDs that show the building they meet in is a damn snake? Probably not. Do you think Barack Obama's excited about me telling the world that he's the Antichrist and proving it using the Bible? Do you think that he's excited about that? Probably not. Do you think the FBI is excited about me showing all the bombings on the U.S. currency printed as images, all the bombings in the United States printed as images on U.S. currency? Probably not. So anyway, I've gotten a lot of death threats, and I'm, I just don't give a rip. I don't care. Do your best. So anyway, the Lord told me I want you to you know do a couple things. He showed me what he wanted me to do, and I was like, okay, I'll do whatever you tell me. So... I've been expecting, I've been expecting the end. The mark of the beast, it goes in your right hand or your forehead. But you got to get the metal in everybody somehow. I'm going to show you a video um, on graphene and I'm going to show you a Versace commercial I probably I'll probably give you the link so we don't risk this video getting taken down it's too important okay so today okay here we go today today I was out doing some of these things the Lord told me to do and by a very bizarre set of circumstances again the Lord sent me well when I say the Lord sent me bizarre set of circumstances I was doing something that he had told me to do and then I out of nowhere, I just pulled off the highway and I went into a place called uh, Cycle Gear in San Antonio. And I know one of the guys that works over there, super nice guy. And I just stopped in to say hi and to check on something. And when I walked in, he wasn't there. And I was like, oh, where? But then oddly enough, you see the shirt I'm wearing? I don't really buy motocross shirts uh, too often. Um, I got rid of my dirt bike uh, a while back. And so... You know, motocross shirt is just not what I wear out in public. I would, you know, I wear them sometimes for videos, but it's just not a shirt I, I don't go out in public wearing a motocross shirt. I just don't. Okay, so anyway, so when I went into this motor, motorcycle shop looking for my friend to see if he was around, he wasn't there. So, But I made this loop, and all of a sudden I look over and I see this shirt and another shirt, and I hear the Lord tell me, I want you to get that shirt. And I thought, that is so weird. Why? You want me to get this shirt. 
It says Fast House 805 gas and beer. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that 805 was, it's a beer. I had no idea, but I was like, it's really weird. So while I was in the shop, I take out my cell phone right here and I start trying to document because I'm like, what is going on? And so here it is right here, right there. You can see those videos right here in front of you, right here in front of you. Anyway, I'm documenting, I'm documenting right, right there, all those little forest slow videos. I'm documenting while I'm there, like, why is the Lord telling me to get a shirt? That's so weird. I was like, this, okay, is that in my head or something? Am I just like, and I'm like, I, I really won't wear that shirt. I won't, I won't wear it. So why would I get it? Anyway. Let me show you the video real quick. Okay, so let, let me set this up for you. The video is up on the screen. So here I am in a in a motorcycle shop, right? Uh, and I hear the Lord tell me, I want you to get that shirt. Get both of them. And I'm like, weird. And so I take out my camera and, I, and I'm like, okay, this is really weird. The Lord's telling me to buy this sure why and so i start documenting it right and it's it's awkward it's super weird i'm like okay why is the lord telling me to and as i'm doing it this guy pops up and his name's pedro i, I couldn't remember his name i don't know him that well but you know I've, these guys know me relatively well the guy that i go see over there knows me but this guy, he's seen my skydiving stuff. He's seen videos with, or videos from Vlad Eye where he's seen skydiving with the space shuttle, you know, the sky surfing. And as it turns out, he's trying to get my attention. So I'm in there trying to covertly make this video, which you're going to see right now. It's up on the screen. I'm trying to covertly make this video on this, this guy that I sort of know. He's like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, uh, hey, I'll be right back. And I, I stopped my video on camera. I'm like, and I'm like, hey, what's up? And he goes, he's he's Hispanic, and he's like, oh my gosh, I've been I've been looking for you. I've been hoping you would come in. I'm a skydiver now, and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So he runs to the back, and he he gets his phone out, and he shows me. He started skydiving. He's skydiving on his own. He's going to a real little drop zone, and I'm like, that's awesome. How many jumps do you have? I mean, he's like, I got twelve. And I'm like 12 on his own. And I'm like, oh, that's great. So he's a student. And so I look at a couple of pictures of he's got, you know, still photos on his phone. And I was like, dude, you got really good body position. You look really stable and stuff. He's like, yeah, he's super excited. And I want to be excited with him. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. He goes, yeah, you inspired me. You know, when I saw your videos and your skydiving, it inspired me. I had to go do it. And I was like, dude, that's awesome. So we're having a little moment, right? But I'm trying to do a covert video on why the Lord is telling me to buy some. <laughs> I don't even know that this is beer. He's telling me buy this black, these two black and white shirts. What? Okay, so I finished my little conversation with Pedro. He shows me the stuff and I'm like, hey, thanks for doing that. Thanks for showing me because I was the inspiration to get him to go do it. And so I was like, that's super cool. So anyway, so then I go back to where the shirts are and I'm all, okay, let's try this again. So the Lord's telling me to get these shirts. Why? Why would the Lord be telling me to get these shirts? And so that's what, that's what this recording is right here behind me. And so then, you know, I have to pause it a few times. Ready? And then I buy the shirts. The Lord tells me to look up 805. By the way, that's an isotoxyl star. And, and then he tells me to look up 805 and I'm like, all I've been doing is making things secure, getting everything ready. The Lord told me, prepare yourself, get everything ready. And I'm like, okay, that's crazy. And then all of a sudden he says, look up 805 and I'm walking out of the cycle shop. And there's Pedro and I'm doing a little video as I'm walking out the door, just talking to the camera. And I walk out the front door of the cycle shop and there's Pedro over there smoking a cigarette. And I'm like, and he's trying to like weigh me down again. So I'm in the middle of a video and I'm like, uh, and then I go, okay, that's Pedro over there. Or that's, or that's the guy that was talking to me. I couldn't remember his name. And so I walk over there and I talk to him. And as I'm talking to him, he's like, 
he goes, I said, so how do you like it? How's it going with the skydiving? He goes, oh my God, it's so awesome. I love it so much. He goes, you know, when we're going up, and he's going, this is exactly what he's saying. He's going, you know, when we're going up, I get a little nervous in my stomach. But then as soon as I let go of everything, I'm good. And I'm like, and I hear my in my spirit, Jonathan, it's time to let go now. This guy is saying, while we're going up, you know, in an airplane, because he's a skydiving student. He's like, yeah, while we're going up, I get a little nervous. You know, like the video of the guy that said when he was leaving Earth and he's looking at Earth and it became a speck. And then he's in a wall of water and then he has to let go. And now I have this guy looking me right in the eye going, yeah, when we're going up, I get a little nervous. But when I let go of everything, everything's going to be okay. He literally said those words, which is exactly what they said in Finding Nemo. Just let go. It's, it's going to be okay. How do you know? I don't. He literally said the exact same words. And I was like, what? Okay. That's not the only way I know it's time. That's not just my my uh, art gallery moment like Chinati. After I got home today and the things that have happened today, one after another, the Lord said, Jonathan, it's time. You need to tell everyone it's time. So let me give you the evidence. Here you go. Ready? Okay. Here we go. It's just super weird. I'm trying to get by. I stopped by for just a sec. Hey, how's it going, man? Anyway, someone stopped me. I, I'm going to show you just a sec. Hang on. Yeah. One of the guys that... Okay, I'm going to pause it. So, obviously, you can see I'm in the shop. I'm trying to make a little covert video to tell y'all what's going on. Why would the Lord tell me to buy this shirt? Why? Why? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. He told me to look up 805. 805 in the Bible happens to be everything I've been doing for the past week. I even went to Houston to talk to them to deliver the same message in person to the ark. This is what the Lord told me. It's time to get ready. Prepare your hearts. This is it. Okay, now. Here we go. Works here. He stopped me. He became a skydiver. But anyway, the weird thing was, I stopped in here, this is very weird, just popped in for just a sec. And it was weird, it just in my spirit, it was like, go in. And then I watched it, so this is this is where the dirt bike stuff is. I don't really shop in the dirt bike stuff anymore. Um, when I had a dirt bike and, you know, and other times I would, but anyway. But I stopped in here and it was the strangest thing, so I stopped over here. And these, these shirts were here and inside of me i heard get them multiple it yeah, was so weird so never, it was really bizarre just no, never heard of shaper it says fast house 805 805 and one of them has the checkerboard thing you know like this motocross so it's a finish line right so and then the other one it's different but what a weird thing to hear, get those, right? Like, why would I get those? So anyway, so I'm grabbing these t-shirts. I mean, the weirdest thing, <clears throat> I'm out getting some stuff and this is not really on my list and to just in my spirit go in and get these. Why would I get two shirts that say Fast House? 805, that's an isotoxal star, by the way. And so anyway, I'll, I'll, there's my buddy that started skydiving. That's who stopped me in the store. So anyway, he said he was, uh, he was jumping down. Let me talk to him. So I'm here at the Cycle Gear shop. I just stopped in up randomly. And I showed some skydiving stuff to Pedro. Pedro. Okay, so now he comes up to me and he says, Hey, 
I'm skydiving. <laughs> he's skydiving. <laughs> so he pulls out his phone and he shows me his skydiving. He became a skydiver. And so I walked outside and here he is again. And so I stopped to talk to him and I asked him, so how do you like it? And he said, I love it. Just, uh, just when I climb is when I get a little bit nervous. But once I let go, it's all good. There you go. See, I'm okay, so everybody that knows I've been saying you got to let go. I've been telling everybody this. You know, you got to let go, guys. So anyways, did you hear what he said? Did well. you hear what he said? You have to let go, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Let go and everything's going to be fine. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> okay. Okay, do you understand what just happened? Okay, there's Pedro over there. He's a guy that I see occasionally if I come over here and he runs up to me and he's like, dude, you're not gonna believe this. I'm skydiving. I'm like, that's awesome, dude. And so at the same time, I hear the Lord telling me, I want you to buy these two shirts. I'm like, why? Weird, you want me to buy two shirts that say Fast House 805? Uh, you know, it's got a finish line on it. Everyone's, oh, Illuminati, shut up with the Illuminati nonsense. Anyway, so the Lord tells me to buy these two shirts, and I'm like, okay. And then Pedro has come outside to smoke a cigarette, and I'm like, so I walk out the door, and there he is again. And, I, and I'm like, hey, you know what? Let's chat. And so so I walk up to I turn off, you know, this is the previous video. I, I, I turn off my phone because I'm documenting buying these and Pedro's outside over there at the corner smoking a cig. And I said, well, tell me, how's it going, dude? I'm with the whole skydiving thing. And he goes, dude, it's awesome. Except when I, when I, when I ride to the altitude, when I'm going up, when I'm going up, I get a little nervous, but once I let go, everything's okay. And I'm like, oh my God, that's all I've been telling everybody. The Lord's telling me, it's time to let go because we're going up. It's time to go. What do you think the odds are that just happened to me? What? Now wait till you see what 805 means. Okay, so I'm going to pause that now and I'm going to just have a talk with you for a second. Let me ask you a question. Do you think it's possible to walk randomly walk into a motorcycle apparel shop? You know, they sell helmets and all that stuff. To walk in there when you're just on a whim just to see, yeah, that's not the guy I was going to see. And then some guy that's there, I inspired him to skydive, so he wanted to come up and share it with me. And then he tells me, yeah, but when I'm going up, I get a little bit nervous. But once I let go, everything's okay. Do you think that's possible? Not with the timing and the circumstances of the entire last week and the videos I just showed you. I, the, the angel said, you have to let go of everything of the earth. Finding Nemo, it's time to let go. Doctor Strange, you have to let go. I mean, I'm like, well, let go, let go, let go. The video I did yesterday, all the stuff that the Lord's putting in front of me constantly every day, it's time to let go. That's not possible. So when I got home, I was like praying with Corey and I was, I was just sitting here going, this is absolutely nuts. And the Lord showed me and he's shown me that the human race, the host body system has been, is being taken over by the iron now. The iron mixed with miry clay. They got to get the iron in you first. Let me show you... Hey, now I, now I want y'all, this is what you have to do right now during this video. Right now you have to do this. Okay, I'm going to show you what to do. Here, these are the folders. This is Special Project 2. I'm going to go back, watch. I'm going to walk it back so you can see. This is Special Projects 2. I'm going to walk it all the way. Here it is. Special Projects 2. You click on that. Then you click on Serpent Insect equals the per pyramid race because the serpent race is an above ground looks human but they're really insects from the pit hunting angels so you go you click on that link and then you come down here now right here is real-time self-assembling graphene oxide nanotech you see that right there you can go watch that you can click on this right now and go watch it it's in german but 
I had it translated uh, to English, and here here's the English translation right here. Real-time self-assembling graphene right there. And here's the bright crystal Versace TV commercial. Let me click on that real quick. Okay, now listen up. I have used this commercial so many times in the past to show everybody this is a representation of the re the serpent race putting their seed in Eve. This is a representation disguised in a in a perfume commercial. Now listen to what I'm telling you. This commercial that I'm going to show you where it, she comes down from heaven, this crystalline thing comes out of the desert dry ground forms a penis, she has sex with it, and it turns her to crystal, and then she's caught, her essence is caught inside of a bottle, and it's, ooh, Versace perfume. That is a weird-ass commercial. That has nothing to do with a perfume. It has to do with capturing your soul in the way they did it. Let me tell you something. That video I just showed you that you need to go watch, it's identical. I'll show you some pics. I can't play the video of the graphene oxide here, but you can go watch it. I'll show you which one to watch. Watch, watch this now. Okay, pause it. Look right here in the bottle. See the girl? There's her eye. There's her eye. There's her nose. There's her mouth. They have captured her essence because of a crystalline substance that took over her body. Did you see it? First, it, the crystalline substance came out of a desert dry ground situation. A desolation. A complete desert. Desolate system. It comes out. It forms a penis. Is that perfume sales to you guys? That's kind of insane. But it's true. The serpent race. And then she has sex with it. And then what happens? It forms a prison and it takes over her and she dies and she exhales. You know what the word spirit is in the Bible? Breath. The word spirit is breath. She breathes out her last breath. Her eye turns to a slit like a serpent. And then her essence is captured in a bottle. Do you understand what you're looking at? Ready? Look right here. There she is. Watch. Look at her eye now. One eye's in the dark, one eye's like a serpent. And then she's trapped inside of a bottle. Wow, what a. What an amazing perfume commercial. Okay, do y'all remember when I was coming back from Grand Junction with the shipping containers to take them to the ark that represents the bride of Christ and the judgment seat leaving? I was on Highway 50, remember, and I had a thing that said, Feet of Clay. Do y'all remember that? 
feet of clay that's daniel i literally had just taken a photograph of a brochure in in new mexico on the way to pick up the uh the containers and the lord told me photograph that it said feet of clay that's daniel 2 the last kingdom shall be the feet the toes miry clay mixed with the iron we're the miry clay but you need to get the iron in there in the system somehow I was in line waiting to go through a pass and a boulder fell and crushed a guy in front of me that was working on the road. The name of the guy that got crushed, the Lord said, look up the meaning of his name. When I was in Houston visiting those guys, or I think Eric called me, Eric looked up the name of the guy and the guy's name meant dominant ruler. It had just come out in the papers. The dominant ruler was crushed by the rock. Marie Clay. Let me read you the scripture real quick. Daniel 2.43. And whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with Marie Clay. What's getting put into the whole world right now? I'll tell you what's getting put into the whole world. Graphene. Whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever, for as much as thou sawest that the stone, the rock, that was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it break into pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is sure. And in the dream, Daniel told him in the dream, Thou sawest the till that a stone that was cut out without hands, which, which smote, which smote to completely smite, it smote the image of his feet that were made of the iron and the clay, and it break them into pieces. Where as much as you saw the rock that was hewn from the quarry without hands. Do you know who the rock that was cut from the quarry without hands is? That's Jesus. And he's going to crush all these other kingdoms. Do you find it weird that I was on a highway in Colorado and a guy in front of me was crushed by a giant boulder on Highway 50 while I was bringing the shipping containers to the ark? He was crushed in front of me. And his name meant dominant ruler. And I had just previously photographed a pamphlet that said feet of clay. I'll show it to you. Remember my whole trip to go get the shipping containers? There it is. Feet of clay right there. The Lord, the Lord told me photograph it. Remember on the way up there? Remember what happened? I looked off the highway and it was Jesus blowing a shofar all the things that happened on that trip was Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Now the Lord is saying, I'm at the door. Now the Lord is telling me, let go of everything. Let go. Today, a guy came up to me and said to me, or I walked up to him and he said, yeah, you know, when I'm going up, I get a little nervous. But when I let go, it's all okay. Did you hear him say that? While I'm getting a shirt from there, now are you ready? When I got home with this shirt, I was telling Corey this story. And he said, did you know that's a beer? And I said, what? This is a beer? I bought a beer shirt? <laughs> and he goes, yeah. Let me show you something very odd about this shirt. Okay. Strange. They have one white and one black. Uh, just like the system we're in. It's dark, light, and darkness. It's Firestone Walker. 
Firestone, Walker. All of a sudden in my spirit I heard, Thou wast in Eden, thou wast in the garden of God. Thou didst walk upon the stones of fire. And I thought, that is so weird. That's in Ezekiel. That's in Ezekiel 28. Firestone Walker? That's Lucifer. Thou wast in Eden. Thou walkest upon the stones of fire. Fire stone walker. And I'm in the living room just going, this is so bizarre. The beer I'm, the beer that's on the shirt you told me to get. Lord said, look up the number 805. Let me show you 805, the number 805 in the Bible. I make safe, secure, fast, to make firm, safe, to make safe, to fasten, to make secure, to make secure, to make firm and secure. That's what 805 means. I was sitting there just perplexed going, this is very strange, all of this. The Lord said, tell, shows Corey. Here's where the where here's where this place is. Firestone Walker, right here. Firestone Walker Brewing Company. That's the name of the brewing company that makes the beer. Paso Robles. It's y'all know what Paso Robles means? Walk of the oaks, Robles or oak trees, and then. In my spirit, I hear Isaiah. Let me show this. Described in Isaiah 61.3. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Blessed are those who mourn. This has always been a baffling beatitude to me. Its deepest meaning eludes me almost like a dream upon waking. I have a hazy understanding of its meaning, yet in the glare of the morning, I wonder if I truly understand. But do I understand that, the, that Isaiah prophesied a coming Messiah, Jesus, who would replace mourning with the oil of gladness. He would replace a faint spirit with a garment of praise. This would be so that those who mourn may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So let me show you that scripture. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prisons to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. And to comfort those that mourn. Y'all know I'm the V for vengeance guy, don't you? You know I have a parachute that says V for vengeance. I have a truck that says V for vengeance. I have a motorcycle that says V for Vengeance. I have flight suits that say V for Vengeance. Flight suits. Parachutes. It's weird that a guy walked up to me today, or I walked up to him, or he walked up to me while I was making a videotape of this shirt that the Lord told me to get a shirt? Why? What does 805 mean? To make fast and secure. That's all I've been doing for the past week. The same guy tells me. I'm fine. But when I'm going up. I get a little nervous. But then as soon as I let go. Everything's fine. Well you know as the bride of Christ. We have to go up. Can you imagine if you're going up and you haven't let go? How do you go up if you haven't let go of everything? I'm just asking. I know that he called me to let go of everything now. He told me, Jonathan, 
let go of everything of the world. Let go of your children. Let go of anything you're holding on to, any worries you have, anything. It doesn't matter anymore. Let go. I'm just giving you a testimony. Everything that's happened to me in the last two weeks is no different than getting ready to go to Chinati. It's no different than going to Kill Devil Hills. The Lord communicates it in a certain way. I hear him and I'm like, okay, you're telling me to go to Chinati, but can you show me somehow that you want me to go there? And the end of that was walking into an art gallery with a painting of Chinati with a guy leading, a shepherd leading sheep, and it says Melvin Warren. That's what got me to go to Chinati. Same thing with Kill Devil Hills. He did a series of events, and then he showed me the devil getting killed. I went to Kill Devil Hills. Now he's been telling me, Jonathan, it's time to let go of the world. Let go of everything. Don't hold on to anything anymore. And then today, some guy that was inspired by me showing him skydiving stuff walks up to me while I'm doing a covert video of this shirt and he tells me he's a skydiver but he gets a little nervous going up but as soon as he lets go everything's good and then I come home and the number 805 and the beer fast house is connected to the Bible somehow what stones of fire I mean you couldn't even think this stuff up. I mean, you couldn't even imagine it. They will be called Oaks of Righteousness. Lord told me to look it up. Oaks of Righteousness. Do y'all remember the Lord God gave me the identification of his name that in the New Testament... You look at the word Jesus and you walk it back and it literally means Yeho, Shua, Yeho, the self-existing eternal Jehovah. Yeho, the self-existing eternal Jehovah. Shua saves, the self-existing eternal Jehovah saves. Jesus is the Lord God from Genesis 2. The Lord God. Ready? Let me show you. Ready? You want to see crazy? Let me show you crazy. Remember Genesis 2? It's not I am it's not Elohim. See, in in Genesis 2, and Elohim ended his work. Elohim, Elohim, right here, 430. God's angels, magistrates ended his work. Deputy ship, remember? Is the Lord God a deputy? It's a yes or no. Deputy ship. Employment. So the so Elohim ended his work. Elohim ended his deputy ship. But right here, the Lord God, that's not that's not Elohim. It's the Lord, the self-existent, eternal Jehovah, formed man. Ready? The self-existent, eternal Jehovah to exist. Now, Jesus, ready? Everybody knows Jesus is Emmanuel, right? Therefore, the Lord shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Emmanuel, right there. Ready? Emmanuel, ready? Hebrew for word 410, Emmanu, it's a conjunction. That's 57, 5973. Emmanu means with us is. And then Hebrew word 410, is El the Almighty God ready? El the Almighty God. See it? El the Almighty from the root 352. Properly strength. Politically, achieve politically a ram and oak. An oak. They will be called Oaks of Righteousness. Isaiah 61. You're telling me that somehow I could be wearing a shirt that I stopped in at a motorcycle shop and some guy in the motorcycle shop bears witness to everything the Lord's been telling me all week by saying I get a little nervous when I go up. You know, like us going up leaving. But when I let go, everything is okay. 
and then my shirt happens to go to Paseo de Robles, the Walk of the Oaks, and I hear the Lord tell me, look it up in the Bible, and it's Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61? I just, I almost, I almost can't process this. It's like, what the heck? Or the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God and he just had me shut the door a few days ago in the face of my nemesis and say that's it my goodwill is over and I'm somehow my shirt and a stop in a motorcycle shop is in the Bible <laughs> that's just insane but it's true it all happened I just showed it to you I documented it I don't know what to say. The king's coming. Jesus is coming. I hope you're ready. I hope you've made yourself ready. I hope you know the truth. I hope you're on the rock. I hope that your sins and you've con that you've confessed them to God. I hope that you've let go of the world. I hope you're not looking for a future here. I hope you don't believe there's a future here. I hope you understand that there's a lot of uh, iron going into the, the whole system right now and the iron mixed with miry clay. The Lord already put me on a highway where a guy got crushed right in front of me by a boulder. And his name just happened to mean dominant ruler? It's probably nothing. Anyway, my brain is fried. Besides the Lord plugging me into this equation in a in a part of the day to where I literally had a breakdown where I just cried and cried and cried. He handed me a time capsule. The Lord God handed me a time capsule that I wrote in 2000 and four and he gave this to me out of someone's garage that i'd given it to him as a christmas present in 2004 and in my own handwriting the world has come to an end i was given this a couple days ago in my very own handwriting the time will come when you see that what daniel the prophet spoke about the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing in the holy place. Reader, pay attention. It's the serpent being within the host body. Here is an image of a serpent being holding a half, half serpent, half human offspring. I use the word alien. The time has come to bear witness to this transformation. The image that you are looking at is the fulfillment of a biblical prophecy that is mentioned many times in the Bible. As Christians, we are told to keep watch for the second coming of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. Our Lord will come to collect all of those that belong to him in the rapture. The rapture will begin the years of tribulation before the final battle of Armageddon, the scene of the final battle between good and evil. There are many signs that will precede the second coming of Jesus, and we are to watch. We are to keep watch and recognize the signs. We are told to keep watch and be ready. What do you think the odds are that I'm holding this in my hand? that was produced in 2004, put in somebody's garage, disappeared for 17 years, and then resurfaced this last week. Probably nothing. We are told to keep watch and be ready. 
Truly no, no one knows the hour of the day. However, we are called to stay alert and keep watch. I must emphatically say I myself do not know the hour or the day of the coming of the Lord or, or the month of, or the year of the coming of, second coming of Jesus. However, several books in the Bible, including Matthew, Mark, and Luke, give us some very clear signs to look for. These signs will let the believers know that the time is rapidly approaching. Okay, this was handed to me a few days ago. It's my own work. This is used in court against me to try and take my children away. Do you understand? This is what the enemy tried to use. They got a hold of this book and tried to use it. Remember Mr. Garza? So, Mr. Click, you believe aliens have had sex with human women. He had this book in his hand. I was like, where the hell did he get that? That was Lou and Marina, the old enemy of my enemy is my friend thing. And now this is resurfaced that says... The time is at hand on the heels of a ring at the back door and the magazine. He's coming through the door and on the heels of it's time to let go. It's time to let go. It's time to let go three times. And then a, a guy that started skydiving saying it's time to let go. Okay. With 805 to make fast and secure and secure when that's what I've been doing this week, getting ready. I don't even know what to say. As I went through this book, there are so many, there are so many slam dunks in this book. There's a serpent eating a sheep. That's the card. Yeah, that's the card my wife gave me before she uh, showed what she really was. That's a serpent eating a sheep, guys. The abomination that causes desolation. I am bearing witness now to the destruction of the temple of God. And you know what's destroying it? The iron mix with miry clay. You know what that is now, don't you? It's here. It's done. It's already happened. All they're waiting for now is this. That's it. Okay, let me show you the video to watch so you know that. Okay, we watched the Bright Crystal video, right? So here's what you're going to go watch next. I'm going to go watch, okay, the Bright Crystal video, watch this. So now you can watch this, this video right here. Re-edit right here. This video right here. Anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to click off this. I'm going to click back. I don't want, okay, so you're going to go right here to re-edit Versace, Bright Crystal, real-time self-assembling. Read that for yourself. Read this part for yourself. Read that. And you're going to match the two together. Let me show you a couple pictures from that video because I've got to be careful about the way I do it. Here is the Versace commercial. Right there, there it is. That's the Versace commercial. Uh, and this is what happens with this stuff. Real-time self-assembling. Right here, just read this. Now go watch it. It's here. The mystery is solved. That's what this is all about, getting the platform for this, the mark, Matthew 13, I mean, uh, Revelation 13. It's going to be an RFID, a palisade and a stake. I've shown it to you. I've shown you the, the vocabulary is exactly correct. And now the time has come. Okay. Again, I'm probably going to try and redo this video just because I am, I don't know what to say. I want to try and show you in the most profound way what happened. I'm not sure how to do it except to say these are the steps that led up to the Lord communicating this. I had to have the same thing happen just to go to Chinati to go kill Devil Hills the way the Lord got me to be on the radio. You know, y'all know the Amy's ice cream testimony. All these testimonies are true. 
I've laid hands on people that are blind and they can see. The Lord took me to my Isaiah 61 today. The day of vengeance of our Lord. I'm the V for Vengeance parachute guy. Just saying. So his vengeance is coming now. The time, the time of, of grace. Uh, it doesn't mean that, I want to be very clear. It doesn't mean that people won't get saved out of the tribulation. But if you are hoping not to have to see all the horror in the world, that time has come to an end. Once the church is called away, the only you're going to be in the great tribulation. You'll be in it. So it's not going to be an easy ride to get home. That's for sure. It's probably going to be horrifying. Just letting you know. But doesn't mean you can't get there. It just means you're going to have to be willing to die in probably a pretty brutal way just to get there. Just saying. That's why everyone will be put to the test. That's why it's called the hour of testing. Revelation 3. Because you have kept the, my word and have not denied my name, I will keep you from the hour of testing. It means experiment of good or evil. That's what it means. You will be put to the test. Will you do good or will you do evil? That's it. Okay, I'm I'm overwhelmed and I love you in Christ. I, I'm try I, I literally cried so hard today. I cried so hard when I when I ref, just when the Lord gave all this to me, I just sat in my house and cried because it was so overwhelming because I know it's true. I don't sit there and cry like that over nothing. It 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 slam dunked me. Anyway, okay. I love you guys in Christ. Let me show you a shirt somebody sent me. I think it's phenomenal. You want to see the truth printed on a shirt? What do you see there? You see like a family riding bicycles, but what is it really? It's like a demon hunting a little boy upside down. Like a different thing dimensionally, right? What well, looks like just kids riding bikes having fun. It's really a demon hunting a kid.